Hello, everyone. It is so good to be with you on the, this day of come together, be together. We're going to be talking for the next 30 minutes about spiritual wellness. Now, I'm a retired nurse and also a certified faith community nurse. And so I'm going to be approaching it from the standpoint of my health background. Um, and you know that most insurance companies these days, and particularly Medicare, uh, they want you to have an annual wellness visit. Um, it's a time when they just bring you in for a status check uh, of your overall well being. And it's a time to encourage you and help you to make positive changes if those are necessary. And the way they um, uh, do that is that they look at. Um, your key body parts, your lifestyle, your uh, health practices, uh, what do you do for illness prevention? And so I think we pretty well know that, you know, the basics, we know the basics, whether we do them or not, the basics for good physical health or, you know, a proper diet, um, exercise, good sleep and rest, all of those things are very important. And the same is true for our spiritual wellness. Um, just like we should be feeding our bodies good, healthy food, it's critical that we feed our spiritual selves a good diet of God's word. Um, nutrition for our souls, if, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. So that's sort of how I'm going to base uh, what I share with you today. I'm going to be uh, sharing a lot of, of different scripture references with you, just so that you'll see how how much God wants us and he has given us his instructions on how to care for ourselves, both physically and spiritually. And as a health professional, I was trained that anytime I'm assessing someone, I'm doing a head to toe assessment. You start at the head and work your way all the way down so as not to miss anything. And so let's do the same here with our spiritual assessment. Let's start at the top with our minds. Um, Philippians 2.5 tells us to have the mind of Christ, or in another translation, to make your own attitude that of Jesus Christ. Now, that's a great place to start, to be spiritually well, isn't it? Um, Romans 12.2 says, do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God is. Hmm. See, that's that's a great place to start to. And Philippians 4, 8, I love this one. Finally, friends, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence and if there is any praise, dwell on these things. Great, great guidance. So having a clear and proper mindset, having the mind of Christ, is really the foundation for our spiritual health, isn't it? I think so. Now, when you're in that assessment, your healthcare provider is going to do something called a mental status check. Uh, sometimes they will ask you questions directly, and other times they will uh, sort of do it while they're talking to you otherwise. But a uh, mental status check involves finding out if you are, uh, as we say in, in healthcare terminology, is the patient alert and oriented to time, place, and person? In other words, are they connected to reality? Well, that's a good question to ask ourselves if we're doing our own spiritual wellness check. Are we alert? Are we alert to the goodness of God all around us? Do we see God in action around us? Um, are we alert to the opportunities that we're given to serve others and to witness to them both in word and deed? Um, are we alert to the activity of the enemy who is constantly, constantly trying to lure us away from following after Christ? Good questions, aren't they? Yeah, let's consider those. 
And then, of course, they're always going to check your memory. Well, and that's a good thing, too. Do we carry God's word in our memory as well as in our hearts? I ran across something late, uh, recently that I like, and I'm going to um, uh, spend some time with it. But it's called the ABCs of Faith. And it's a little plaque that, uh, like, you could sit up. I don't know if you can see, but something you could sit up on your desk and it goes all the way through the ABCs and for each letter it has a brief statement of faith and then it has the scripture reference for that or a scripture reference for that underneath it for example always a always give thanks b build others up c cast your cares on him and it goes all the way through the alphabet like that and I think this might be a, a really interesting exercise to do is to try to memorize not only those ABC statements of faith, but um, even stretch ourselves a little bit, exercise our spiritual wellness a little bit and try to memorize the verses that go with them. But at the same time that your healthcare provider is checking your overall uh, mental state, they're also looking for signs of ill health mental ill health. And so what can we look for? Well, have we allowed fear or worry or anger or bitterness uh, to seep into, into our spirits? Um, do we allow any of these negative emotions to dominate us? If we find that these things are present, then it's time for a good treatment <laughs> with a dose of God's word. Um, you know, Jesus taught us about all of these negative emotions and attitudes. Um, and so whatever you find that may be dominating or taking up a lot of space in your spirit, then you can look up verses about, uh, about what Jesus taught, about what God teaches throughout the Bible, about all of these things. But most or a lot of Bibles have in the back either a concordance or a topical index that you can look up things like fear or worry or bitterness um, by topic and find the verses that correspond to those. And when you do, then sit with those and um, ask God to prayerfully ask God to intervene uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit to replace those negatives with God's positives. There's always an opposite to the negatives. And God wants us to, um, to have his positives in our lives, not the negatives that the world gives or the negatives that the enemy wants to trick us with. So it's perfectly okay to ask God for an attitude transplant. He specializes in those. So moving on down now, what about our eyes? What about our eyes? Uh, you know, they generally recommend a yearly eye, eye exam. But what about our spiritual eye exam? Do we see evidence of God all around? Do we see others as Christ sees them? I think that's a key question. How do we look at others? Are we able to look past the exterior of someone and see what might be a great need inside. You know, some folks are either, um, oh, I don't know, it, it, they're, they're hard to love. I call them porcupines. It's hard to hug a porcupine. You know, maybe it's somebody who is very negative all the time or kind of hostile or irritable a lot of the time, or maybe they're very standoffish. But you've, if you can ask yourself, What's going on here? Why is this person behaving that way? Is there something deeper inside? And at least try to put yourself in their, their spot or to uh, see things the way they see them. We never know other people's life experiences and why they are the way they are, but we can always pray for them. Are we ever blinded by preconceived notions of other people? You know, this is the definition of prejudice, prejudging. 
Now I have a little personal story about that that I just share with you. And I know that um, this is sort of a, a silly example, but it really brought some, it was a big teaching moment for me. Uh, many years ago, we were in the process of moving back to Greenville from uh, living in North Carolina for several years. And um, uh, the moving van broke down with her stuff on it. So here we were moving into a small apartment where our house was being built. I had two small children who were cranky and tired and whatever. And then we found out the moving van broke down. We didn't know how long it'd take to get it fixed, how late it would be. So I decided, when in doubt, feed them. And so I was gonna go to the store and uh, get some snacks and some things to tide us over while we waited. Well, it was raining cats and dogs. And of course we were dressed for work, for moving, not for fashion. And so I go into the local grocery store and grab some things and um, get up to the checkout counter. Now, my husband had been working here already for uh, several weeks and uh, he had opened a checking account and I had a checkbook and I get up to the uh, cashier's line and they got those little things where, you know, little platforms where you can write your checks. And so I've put my checkbook up there and I'm starting to fill in the date and it, we didn't have printed checks with our name and address on them yet. And she looks over and she sees that check and very haughtily, she says, can't take that check. And I said, what? I've got ID. She says, can't take that check. Well, you might know I didn't have much cash on me. So I had to put stuff back, embarrassed, all that kind of stuff. And I uh, finally got a few things that I had enough money to pay for, but it, it irritated me. And so the following Monday afternoon, I was on my way home after a job interview. And of course, at that point, I was dressed very professionally, hair, makeup, the whole thing. And I bought my groceries or I got my groceries and I went up to the same checkout line, the same cashier. I put the same check out, the check up there on the counter to write it. She never batted an eyelash. She paid no attention to what kind of check it was, even when I handed it to her. And I made sure I had enough cash to pay for my groceries by then. But she never, she never looked twice because I looked different. I was the same person. It was the same money. But it was because I looked different. So let's not let ourselves, let's not let our eyes be blinded by prejudice of any sort. And certainly in our day and age right now, we are seeing um, a wonderful awakening to all sorts of prejudice. And we need to ask ourselves, is that how God wants us to see our fellow human beings? So moving on around to our ears, an assessment question to ask ourselves for spiritual wellness is, can we hear God speaking to us? You know, it's, I've had people say, well, how do you know it's God speaking to you? Well, for me, it's a lot like just hearing a good friend's voice on the telephone. I have a friend named Susie. She never says, hey, this is Susie when she calls. She just starts talking. But I've known her for years, had lots of conversations with her. I recognize her voice. So it's through that familiarity of spending time with one another that you begin to recognize uh, that voice. So when we pray, when we are in conversation with God, let's be sure that it's not a one-sided conversation, that we're not just talking, we're not just reading off our laundry list of wishes to God, but that we are also taking time to listen for God's leading. And it reminds me of the story in 1 Samuel, where young Samuel heard his name being called and he didn't know what was going on. And it wasn't until the old priest told him to go back. And he did. And when he heard his voice this time, Samuel says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. I think that needs to be our response, isn't it? To speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Ah, uh, but then we get to the good part. What about our mouth? You know, when you go to your healthcare provider, they always say, okay, open wide and say, ah, and they stick that tongue depressor halfway down your throat. But what does God find when God looks in our mouths? 
does God find our mouths filled with words of love and truth? Or do, does God find our tongues out of control? You know, there's some great wisdom in James 3, 8 through 10, where it says, no person can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who were made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My friends, things should not be this way, says James. So let's be sure that when God examines our mouths, um, that our mouths are constantly filled with words of love and truth and praise. You know, if you wonder how to praise God, just go to the Psalms, just go to the Psalms. And I, I found something interesting recently and it had never hit me before. The very last verse in the whole book of Psalms, Psalm 150, verse 6, says it all. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That could be our praise right there. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what God needs to find in our mouths when we have our spiritual checkup. Well, I said God's in the business of attitude transplants. God's also in the business of heart transplants. And um, I know probably one of our favorite verses, I know it is one of mine, is Psalm 5110. When dear David is imploring the Lord, begging the Lord to heal him. And he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We need to ask ourselves as part of our spiritual assessment, does God reside in my heart? Is my heart filled with God's love for all of God's children, for all of God's creation? Is there forgiveness in my heart? You know, forgiveness may not be something that we have out of our own depths, but God will always give us forgiveness. He will feed us forgiveness through his Holy Spirit that we can then give to whoever has wronged us. It's not from within us, but it comes from God through us to that other person. So when we ask ourselves these questions, if we can answer yes to these questions about what's in our hearts, then that's a pretty good response for our spiritual wellness. Uh, and then we get to our, you know, it's always heart and lungs. And so we get to our lungs. The Hebrew word for um, uh, wind or breath or spirit is ruah, or sometimes it's ruach, R-U-A-C-H. But you know, when, it, when we think about our lungs, I love the old hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. And I bet you could sing it along with me right now from memory. And I'm not going to sing because people who know me know I can't carry a tune in a bucket. But think about those words. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure. Until with thee, I will, one will, to do and to endure. Are we filled with God's spirit? Are we filled with that breath of God? That's a good assessment question, isn't it? All right, now, got heart, lungs, working our way on down. What about our hands? Are, I, are our hands doing God's work? Colossians 3.23 tells us that whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for people. Helping hands are a positive sign of spiritual health. Giving hands are a positive sign of spiritual health not clinging, hanging on to just for me and my well-being. 
but hands that are open to share, to hold up, to help, to nurture, to hug, to be God's hands and feet in this world. Those are healthy hands. And our hands also fold in prayer. That's a good activity for our hands. I have this little thing I learned years ago that um, I just love and I've taught it so much that you've probably heard it too or you've heard it somewhere else, but it's called the 10 finger coping prayer. And it goes like this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, amen. That's my 10 finger coping prayer. And it reminds us that we only do God's work through God's strength. Again, it's like forgiveness. When God gives us a work to do, he equips, he gives us the strength to do it. If we try to run off and do it on our own strength, we're gonna fail. We're gonna burn out, we're gonna be exhausted. But when we trust in God's strength to guide our hands, then we know that we are in the right state of spiritual wellness. Uh, and then we get down to our knees now. <laughs> you know how they make you sit on the edge of the table to hit your knee with a little hammer to, to check your reflexes? Well, when we get to the Medicare wellness assessment, they're also checking our knees for wear and tear <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> as we age, because knees are one of the first things that gives out in a lot of people. But I heard a story, actually, I got this out of our Sunday school literature uh, a couple of months ago, but it's a story I had never heard before. And it was particularly telling to me, um, talked about a group of seminary students who were visiting John Wesley's house, which is now part of a museum in England. And the tour guide was taking this small group of students from room to room and telling them various things about John Wesley. And they got up to the bedroom and um, there beside the bed, still showing uh, in the rug, was two worn spots pretty close together. And the tour guide pointed out that that was where John Wesley knelt every morning for hours in prayer. And he went on to talk about what um, a wonderful revival and spiritual awakening had taken place in England during Wesley's ministry as a result of his, of his work and his ministry. And then they went off to the next room in the, in the next stop. Well, the tour guide got just to the next room and he's counting noses and he realized he had lost one. <laughs> so he goes back and he finds this one young man kneeling by the bed with his own knees in those two worn spots in the rug. And he is praying earnestly and saying, do it again, Lord, do it again. The name of that young man was Billy Graham. Don't you love that story? Do it again, Lord, do it again. That's a good status check for our knees. Well, what about our feet then? Are our feet walking in the footsteps of Christ? Are we walking where God would have us to go where we are being led. Um, this past year, I read a book entitled, it's an old book, it was written in the 1800s, entitled In His Steps. And it's actually a novel based on a sermon series that this minister gave. But it was a, uh, a, a tale that he wove for his congregation over several weeks of uh, what would happen in what had happened in this little town where the, the pastor challenged his flock to let every decision that they made for a year be based on asking themselves the question, what would Jesus do? And in these sermons, he goes on through this long story of all the changes that took place in this town, the good things that happened in this town and the struggles that they had. But when they asked themselves, what would Jesus do? It brought about a huge reformation in the way this town lived and, and ran. And so that's a question. What would Jesus have me do? It's not just the things we wear on bracelets, WWJD. 
but it's what would Jesus have me do? Where will Jesus guide my steps? That's a good assessment question for our feet. And then, of course, while we're on our talking about our feet, the wellness assessment always is checking your balance. And as we get older, that's really important, you know, because we've got to maintain good balance or we can fall and hurt ourselves. But are our lives in balance? That's a question for our spiritual assessment. Do we leave enough Sabbath margin in our lives uh, that God can work within us? Do we have a good balance between work and rest, between work and study, between work and prayer? Um, it's important to maintain that balance because otherwise we get exhausted and our busy lives, if our calendars are so full that we're writing in the margins, that's not a good way to live. God gave us the gift of Sabbath and he intends it to use us to use it for our own benefit. God created Sabbath for us. He knew that we needed it. And so that's our balance. Years ago, I read a, and, and, and ran across a really good book called Stress Less by an author named Margie Hesson, H-E-S-S-O-N. And I have relied upon some of her wisdom uh, for a long time. And she uses a lot of the, the same kinds of approaches that I've been talking about today. But she has a little uh, exercise. It's a meditation exercise that she entitled, Be Still and Know That I Am God. And what she encourages you to do is to read the statement, take a deep breath, read it again, Think about what it says, and then read the next statement. There's four statements in the exercise. So I'm going to ask you to just do it with me right now. It only takes a minute. Just get yourself comfortable. Close your eyes if that will help you. And take a deep breath. And then say to yourself, be still my muscles and know God's relaxation. Another breath. Be still my muscles and know God's relaxation. Be still my nerves and know God's rest. Be still my nerves and know God's rest. Be still my heart and know God's renewal. Be still my heart and know God's renewal. Be still my mind and know God's peace. Be still my mind and know God's peace. So in closing, I hope that this assessment of our spiritual wellness has given you some things to think about. And my prayer is that we will all care for our bodies, which after all are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But then we'll also pay attention to our spiritual wellness, to the end that we might be effective witnesses and instruments for God. So let's go forward together to be faith, hope, and love in action. Thank you.